Jane Botham, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, we're going to be talking about an exciting program that you, as the coordinator of children's services for the Milwaukee Public Library, have been involved in, a collaboration between the schools, the public library, and the Milwaukee art, art community Art in Milwaukee. Uh, later on, we'll be talking about how this program can help uh, library staff people anywhere learn to look more critically at picture books and how we can use them perhaps more effectively with the children and families we're, we're serving. So why don't you go into a little bit of background on this program, starting out with this incredible folder <laughs> which was designed by Lois Ehlert. Yes, it was. Our own Lois Ehlert who happens to live in Milwaukee and has done so much for our community, both the art community as an artist and the library community because she's so involved with children's books. This is a folder that we did for a primer for peace, which again was showing original art for children's from children's picture books at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And she's pulled this together and what we've done in a way, I can't imagine saying this beautiful folder is recycled, but we did have some of them uh, left over and so we used this and then if you open it, you will see that we use the flaps of the folder to talk about our project. So our designer, Mary Slough, who's the designer for the Milwaukee Public Library, did Let's Talk About Picture Books for Children with the ABC motif that matched this. Uh, this folder is for our leaders, or we like to say facilitators, because discussion of picture books involves everyone, and you don't lead discussions. Most of the time you simply facilitate and make sure that you bring up some of the points that may have been missed or make sure that you can expand on the kinds of discussions that make uh, uh, a meaningful discussion of pictures. Why did you start out with the idea of picture books? I think many times <laughs> we think these are the easiest books, the new picture books come in, you flip through them, it only takes a few minutes, right. it's much easier to well, evaluate a all, picture book than fiction or nonfiction. The Milwaukee Public Library has done an enormous amount of work with infants and children. We have several very successful brochures that actually have been used in lots of places uh, in combining the importance of visual literacy with language and, and literacy for children. And so we felt that the connection for reading readiness really is visual and that we needed to have something that when a child or and a parent shares books and they say, read it again, why do both of them like that? What is it that one picture book does that makes it superior to others? And it's a combination of the things that we talk about in the brochure that we are giving to everyone. One of the major reasons why we did do this is because I happen to be the 1993 chair for the Caldecott, which looks at the 1992 books. And uh, that national commitment, as you know, gives you a commitment on a local level to hear as much as you possibly can about what makes a good picture book. Uh, because we are looking at the most distinguished art in a picture book and we will be awarding it to that artist. And it means that we should be bringing as much as we possibly can to those discussions, which we have in the summer and then this January, we will have another one. And for the whole of the year, we are writing uh, to exchanging comments about the books to each other. And this is my way in many ways, and the children's librarians for the Milwaukee Public Library, of being able to have a uh, part of that discussion. But by and large, what we really, really want to do is to have people begin to articulate what re why they really like books. And so we've given them with this brochure a way of looking at picture books and why it makes it successful. Rather than just saying, I like that uh, book, it's or a, children it, will it's enjoy the pictures. It's a nice book. Well, why book. is it nice? So in this brochure, you are talking about the whole picture book as an object. From the outside, you're including the cover, the, the shape of the book, This is talking the about, there's three ways we're going to be talking about the picture book. This is the first way, the whole picture book, and we're looking at it as an object. What is it that makes it a picture book? And why is the size or the cover and the book jacket or the typeface or the paper stock important? 
And actually, we have a number of books we could use for this. Why is this book, <coughs> The Witch's Broom by Van Ellsberg, this size? Most of our picture books are a little bit wider, and they're a little bit shorter. Not much, but just a little. So why would that be? Because of the broom. I mean, this is the way a broom would look. When you look at the book, because you look at picture books in its size, and in a way, subconsciously probably think of the picture book size, this is thinner and it's taller. So it looks like a broom. And I know very well, we all know Van Allsburg. He's very, very popular both for adults and for children, and this is the kind of thing that he would look at. Um, at the same time... So, excuse me, as, as the illustrator, he would work with the designer of the book? Oh, yes. I, this is Char... The, uh, Chris Van Allsburg has written and illustrated this book, and in many ways he is very successful because there's such a seamless way of looking at the uh, pictures and the language, but that's another way of talking about it. I'm, I, I, we're really talking about different books to give a sense of what we say in here. I think this is a very good example of why we ask when you look at a book that you begin at the jacket. This is called a jacket, and then although the end papers are blank, and there are ways of talking about end papers, as you well know, when you begin to talk about a book, oftentimes you begin at the beginning of a story, after the title page. And here we have a picture who came down that road. It says a Richard Jackson book. Just straighten this up a little bit Thank for the you. camera. Then if you look again, here it comes, and this is the dedication page, but again, another look at the road itself. And then we begin with, um, a, this is the dedication page. See I'm looking path. at this upside down, <laughs> so this has the path. And here we go with the story. Now, we haven't seen the title page yet, but we've started with the story so that the child and parent are completely caught up with what is happening with the road. Who came down the road, Mama? And here it is, who came down that road. And it is beginning the rhythm of the book, which has repetition in it also. Now, here's a perfect example that if you started this book at the title page, you yeah. would have lost part of the story. And I think that that's something that's interesting for children to see and it parents. It draws them into the book. And again, it gets back to the whole idea of visual literacy, looking very carefully, concentrating, not missing all the very important details that go to make a fine book. Right. So that the visual ele elements are as important as the literary elements of the book, that the story itself is really told through the visuals in this book as much as the language. One of the things librarians hear sometimes about books, picture books, is this is too sophisticated for a child. Do you think that part of what your training for librarians can do is help librarians to see how they can use books with children and develop a children's appreciation of art as well as the story and oh, more I, simple kinds of things? I think as much as we as people learn about art, we communicate that with our children in many ways. And I think that one of the things that's exciting about working with children is that sense where you say it's way too sophisticated and suddenly realizing that perhaps you have been showing it to the wrong age or perhaps you have been showing that book before a child has experienced art or perhaps you uh, you automatically have, indeed, as you say, really just said, it's sophisticated without recognizing what the elements are. Um, there are some books that, that really are carried by story, and I think the next part of the brochure talks about, by the way, the Milwaukee Public Schools did this as, let me just do this, can, you, can we hold it up so the camera can see it without shining? 
they, we were going to do this in an 11 by 17, and it is, this is 18 by 24, because the art coordinator at the Milwaukee Public Schools wanted to give this to every elementary school classroom so that they can post this and look at books through these elements. So, so as the teachers are using the whole language program or just yes. talking about books, the children themselves will become much and can, more aware and critical and truly looking at a book. Yes. So when we're looking at, there's two ways besides the book as a whole that we thought you would be looking at picture books. One is, how do pictures tell the story itself? And that setting, mood, characters, plot, style, theme, etc. And then we also say that there are, are artistic elements in pictures that tell the story through texture, proportion, perspective, composition. And, and, and actually both of these elements can be talked about in this book. We're using, by the way, all 1992 picture books for this. And although Caldecott Committee people probably are talking about this, we'll go a little bit further in the packet of, of what we look at. But this definitely is something we look at. Here's The Fortune Tellers. This is an interesting book because it is told by a very well-known storyteller, Lloyd Alexander. And the illustrations are by a very well-known illustrator. But unlike Chris Van Alsberg, this is a collaboration. And this is a... Alexander's more known for his longer books, his right. fiction titles. And actually is a Newbery winner, as is Trina at Caldecott. And when you look at this book, which is the, begins on the title page here, you see an incredible perspective. You almost get a sense of Cameroon with this, and that wonderful sense of almost stepping into the story because of this picture. The picture itself has this wonderful sense of trees, that arbor of trees makes you step into the scene. The road going down. It, and so I think that deliberately Trina is in, Trina Shard Hyman, our illustrator, is saying here, come with me. Here is a story of the fortune tellers. And, and again, the importance of looking at the title page, which yes. sometimes we flip right over right to over. get into what we think is the story, and it's not. And, and I do think that it's a wonderful habit to get into for our children to say, the fortune tellers by Lloyd Alexander, illustrated by Trina Shard Hyman. That's one of the things we always encourage people who yes. are doing preschool story times in Hennepin County to talk about the book a right. little bit, to mention the title, to mention the author. And the it is very interesting to see the children who have been read to for many years, but been telling yeah. you about this, they can tell me who their illustrator, favorite illustrators are. And oftentimes, we'll look at a book and say, oh, that's Trina Shard Hyman. She's did and be able, if they don't know the illustrator, they can tell you the book. So this book itself is really artistically giving you a setting. This story tells the story through the characters, but it's really setting that you first see. And it is the pictures that do that. She has set this in visually through the pictures. And as the story progresses, it's a very good story, as Lloyd Alexander is such an excellent storyteller. She has... Um, used the characters and you get a real sense of those characters. There's one story, uh, there's one spread here where um, he is to be a fortune teller and he meets this lovely young woman and she says, will I meet the man of my dreams? And he says, I think you already have. And you can tell by the pictures what he's me meaning. He obviously is quite struck face. with her. The expression in her eyes. Yes. yes. And so here is the beginning of the And the of amusement romance. of the characters in the background, too, all those little details. This is one thing that I think, too, when we work with children, we realize how intrigued they are with mm -hmm. the minutest details right. in picture books. They're going to enjoy this little lizard coming out of the basket, the type of things that adults, right. again, don't concentrate on And the lizard does appear. Two lizards appear throughout this book. So this is a book that's wonderfully um, uh, available for uh, discussions for this particular um, uh, exercise, I think. When you are working with 
the library staff and the, and the teachers, are you helping them develop ways that they can effectively discuss books with children? Well, I have to say that when uh, I became the Caldecott Chair, I did have a lot of, of groups that I asked into my home because you receive many, many books that you can talk about. And I asked people because they were artists and because they were librarians or because they were booksellers or for a number of reasons. And what I d decided was that this was something we could really use as children's librarians. And so four of the children's librarians, myself included, sat down and pulled this whole thing together. And from it, we talked about the opportunity for training. And so we have had uh, training sessions with our senior children's librarians who are in charge of children's services at each library agency. And we also then had a workshop for anyone interested in children's picture books. So the workshop was open to all library staff in the Milwaukee Public Library. At the same time, as we began speaking to people that we felt should be a part of this within the community, uh, and the names are it within the packet, uh, we found that the Milwaukee Public Schools truly wanted to be a part of this. And the Milwaukee Public Schools have paid for all of the printing for this. That's collaboration. Isn't that wonderful? He was so excited over it. Now, the person I talked to at the Milwaukee Public Schools was the art coordinator and the library media specialist, the media center specialist, and the reading resource teacher, and the early education person, coordinators, were a part of that project. But Dick Dornick, who is uh, the art coordinator for the public schools, said this is a natural for our art coordinators. That training has included all of the art coordinators who get together in the fall. Uh, we talked to them about the packet and when it would be available. And all the or art coordinators have a copy of this. The reading resource teachers were just talked to last Wednesday. And they will also be aware of the packet. The packet also will be in every library media center. There will be a set of 1992 picture books purchased for 14 of the elementary schools and three of the middle schools. I really wanted the middle schools to be a part of this too. Often we think that picture books are for right. very young children and don't share them with older kids. And, and the fortune tellers is an example of a probably a preschool, uh, upper preschool through first, second grade. And the widow's broom will be certainly enjoyed from uh, probably first grade up to fourth or fifth. But again, Chris Van Ellsberg, as an author, is so looked at by adults and children that this may be the kind of picture book that middle school would go crazy over and have lots to talk about in there. So um, we chose books that would be uh, appealing to all ages because they are going into the media centers and they will be able to talk about it there. So every teacher could take the, the from those 14 schools, could take this uh, and use it as a part of their classroom curriculum. Any of the private schools, which we always worry about if we are doing something with public schools, I think that's true of all libraries, uh, will be visited by the children's librarians. And this will be given to them through the public library. The public library will have family discussions through the whole month of November to celebrate Children's Book Week. And some of them will have one or two sessions, others will have three or four. Uh, it is uh, begun with Ava Weiss, who is the art designer of picture books for Green Willow. And we're very lucky because she just so happens to have a new grandson in the city. And she's printing the fall picture books in Hong Kong, and she is flying in uh, to give us a talk on the fine art of picture books. And what she's really doing is comparing the fine artists that we have in the art world with the picture book artists. And she is such an enthusiastic person and has been for years a part of this project that I think it'll be very interesting. And this is the tie-in then with the the and Milwaukee Art Institute. Yeah, well, and that's, and that's the kickoff. The so the Milwaukee Art Museum will be sponsoring it with us, and we will be kicking it off, and then that will be, for the Central Children's Room, the first discussion 
kind of. I mean, we're, we're then every Monday night after that. She's speaking next Monday night, November 2nd. And for the rest of November uh, at 7 o'clock, we will be having discussions. What an incredible this. opportunity, though, for all the, the teachers, the students, and the librarians in Milwaukee to have this very concentrated and in-depth well, exposure. and what's really interesting is we have some teachers. We also, by the way, will be welcoming t classes to come to all of the libraries. And the libraries will have 1992 books for them to look at. One of the requirements we're having at the discussions is that you must have read the books. So obviously we are going to start at 7, but let people look at books, read picture books, at least to have a sense of plot. We don't want to talk about the story as the story at this time. What we really want to talk about the, the book is the way I was just discussing them. Uh, and, and so we will assume they will have read the books. Um, and it's I a real family exciting. project, almost a family yes. literacy sort of thing. To get. Well, a family li it is family literacy. And what, when the uh, parents ask about who they can bring, we usually say six or seven-year-olds. Uh, and I think it'll be very surprising to them what the six and seven-year-olds will say. I mean, I think you will have the children saying, look at the lizard, and is the lizard on other pages, uh, which is their way of enjoying a book um, in a way that's very different from perhaps what we would think of. So I think that that will be exciting. Uh, the libraries also are welcoming classes, and they are welcoming the classes to come in, and they can come more than once. So they can have... Uh, an hour of discussion and perhaps the next week make another date for that. So um, public schools are lucky because they can do, they have this for the experience before and after and we're hoping that the private schools will have that also. Well it's a, a wonderful program that I think could be replicated in other parts of the country too just because it is so basic to what librarians and teachers and people in the art community are interested in. I'd like to since we have you sort of a captive audience here. Many of us uh, anxiously await the Caldecott <laughs> choice every year and it's sometimes difficult for uh, people who, who aren't really aware of how that committee works and often you hear, how did they choose that for, for heaven's <laughs> sake? And just listening to the way you're talking about the way you're looking at some of these books gives me a different perspective on how the Caldecott committee must do it. Now I know you take an oath in blood that you can't describe your workings, but give, give us an idea of the process, please. Uh, I can give you, I can say that every month we hand in suggestions. Um, all picture books are considered eligible. They are considered eligible till the day we meet, which is the last week in January. Um, however, we, and we received suggestions from ALSC members, the American Library Association, uh, has a division called the Association for Library Service to Children, and the Association for Library Service to Children is indeed the one that does this. So they must be um, able and aware to nominate. Uh, but we, I feel it's like comparing apples and oranges. Uh, there are many books that are perfect uh, in many, many ways, and it depends on how uh, the book visually tells a story. I, I think that one of the things that people f forget is that the Milwaukee, I mean the American Library Association, if you look in that packet, has indeed a set of criteria that we look at very carefully as Caldecott members. And in there we have put it in um, here because people do ask that question. And here is the uh, Caldecott Award criteria. And uh, as you can see, it's rather uh, extensive. Extensive, And then we gave them this, which is the Caldecott Award pamphlet that we publish every year. But I think that one of the things that needs to happen as far as people who are truly intensely interested in how the Caldecott Award is indeed selected needs to look at this criteria because it is looked at very carefully for how the award is done. So people could write the American Library Association or indeed check perhaps with or the ask you because you'll have that with the packet. <laughs> so I think that that is, but that is something that we ordinarily do. I want to talk a little bit more about the packet, if I may, because there are a few things we we put this packet together because we felt that 
it should be helpful to anyone who wants to start a discussion. Obviously, we want to do it for the librarians and the teachers and, and the art coordinators and the reading resource teachers. Uh, but we felt there were some things that, that should be helpful to anyone who would like to start a discussion. And so we did this, which is um, a talk about how to put together a meeting. That you should have refreshments, but make sure the coffee's on the floor, <laughs> as you don't want to spill it. Um, to make sure that you talk in a positive manner at the beginning, and how to arrange the room. Again, very, very practical advice for people. Very practical. Because it's sometimes those housekeeping Yes. Ideas that make the thing flow the smoothest. The Cooperative Children's Book Center, who, which is a wonderful center, and we're very fortunate to have it in Wisconsin. It's at the University at Madison. Yes. Uh, pulls together a, a discussion uh, group every month to talk about new picture books and new, new, actually all new books, both novels, nonfiction, everything. And this is how they begin. You must talk, uh, comment first positively about the book. There's no such thing as a wrong answer, which is very true, and that everyone is, is more than welcome to talk. And this is very practical advice on how to keep a discussion going in a way that makes people feel comfortable and also gives a fair thing to the book. So we have that. And then we also did a packet of slides because we feel that the, the techniques are so different in a book. I mean, when you look at Widow's Broom, it's done if you look at it with a uh, pencil with sepia uh, color through it, a very, very different kind of a feel of a book and a very different way of looking at a book than fortune tellers, which is done in a very, very more colorful manner uh, with watercolor and uh, I think this is acrylics, but this is another thing we look at, but, but a very different technique than what you see in in widow's broom and oftentimes it makes you feel as if it's comparing apples and oranges. How did this particular medium work? So we are doing this with, uh, we have a packet of slides that allows people to look at the different ways illustrators use art and why they've used that technique for that particular story. Uh, and I think that that's very important for people to see who want perhaps to go a little bit further in discussion. And so that's another thing we've done. I'm interested in one of the comments of, in a book discussion not to just recap the story but talk about yes. the, the things that make that book different, that make that book unusual. And, and that's why we hope that we say we've already read the story. When we start out with the discussion, we want to say that. Jane Botham, we have barely touched the tip <laughs> of the iceberg in terms of, of looking at picture books. Thank you very much for being here. I think we will all approach the 1992 and 93 books with a more critical eye after hearing from you. Well, thank you for thank asking you. me. It was a pleasure.